We've been talking about books this evening, a new chapter for bookshops on both sides of the Atlantic as they get ready to reopen. Barnes & Noble and Waterstones, both owned by Elliott Advisors, are taking various measures to keep customers safe. It's the usual ones of social distancing markers, sanitising stations, but quarantining touched books. James Daunt is the CEO of Barnes & Noble and managing director of Waterstones, joins me from London via Skype. James... Um, I, I find this fascinating, the, the um, uh, quarantining of touched books. How can you do that practically? I mean, I, I know you can do it physically, but how do you make it work practically? I, I think the reality is actually with books, it is very easy, partly because our stores are not as busy as other people's. I mean, we're not like a, a supermarket or a food retailer, I mean, with crowds of people. Um, book buyers are, you know, at this time of year, it's a relatively quiet place and they come into our stores. And if they do pick up a book and choose not to buy it, we just ask them to put it down on a trolley. Um, the trolleys, when they get full, we just wheel them into the back um, and, and leave them there for a, for a few days. I mean, it, it's, it sounds as though it's sort of complicated. Um, it frankly couldn't be any simpler. No, but you'll go through a lot of books. <laughs> I mean, if it's, a pop if it's a popular book that you've picked up, looked at, but, uh, and then put back down. But I understand what you're saying. Essentially, though, what I'm also interested in, the sort of books people bought online versus the sort of books that just simply didn't move. Online, it was fascinating. I mean, people were buying um, really the, the obvious books, the classics. They were reading the big fat books, the books uh, clearly that they had sort of always intended to read, um, and books they knew about. So it was... It, we, you looked at the bestsellers and we knew every single book. Uh, and now that we've got our, our stores reopened, uh, we can see again a more normal uh, bestseller list where we're constantly surprised by what, by what appears. It's the new books. It's the book that got the great review. It's the person who went on radio. Um, and, and those are the books that people discover in bookstores, uh, but somehow don't seem to be able to find when they're browsing online. And I have complete failure because I didn't manage to read the Jane Austen that I'd set my heart on. I was determined I was going to take the advantage of reading during the pandemic. I think I'm not alone. Uh, well, perhaps, but you were probably still hard at work. Um, I think uh, it's an astonishing amount of reading that clearly has gone on. And, and that's you know, been one of the great positives of, or one of the few positives of this period. Um, books have, I think, demonstrated their worth both to entertain, um, to amuse and, and to educate. Um, and we've seen extraordinary demand online. Uh, James, just before we finish, um, in our sort, we, we always like to ask just how's the business doing, if you like, and and how, when we look at the business and the ability, yeah, obviously there have been numerous government help schemes, one way and the other. But do you come out of this pandemic with uh, the company fundamentally, the foundations okay? Um, I, I think we um, are challenged. It's clearly not easy when all of your shops are closed. Um, in the United States with Barnes & Noble, we used that time very productively. We we had our, our core uh, booksellers there working away, and they, they tidied up and actually removed all of the furniture within our stores, what we call relayed them. So uh, if you go back into a Barnes & Noble, you're likely to find a completely transformed um, store. So that was a positive. Um, I think my biggest worry is that we will come, we will reopen onto high streets and into shopping malls and the like, where many of our neighbours um, will have fared less well. Um, and we require our neighbours. We, you know, people shop not just for the single store, but for the overall enjoyment of being um, in a community environment. And if too many other retailers have <coughs> disappeared, that will be tragic and, and will actually impact us as well. Um, no, it, it, it has not been easy, but, but we've come out of it much, uh, much less scathed than I think many other retailers. One book I should read? If there's one book that I should read before the end of the year, which one is it? 
Well, I've just finished uh, Parallel Lives by Phyllis Rose, which was is, is a portrait of, of five marriages. Um, and as all of us, or many of us, um, spent so much more time at home um, and perhaps were examining our marriages more closely, it's a wonderful portrait. Um, and I enjoyed it greatly. And uh, in the very good humour of, of, of our own household, um, um, I found it, I, lo I thoroughly recommend right. it. Phyllis Rose, Parallel Lives. I, I shall... Here's the promise, because we always do a promise. I will read that book, and the reason I'll read it particularly is because my own wedding had to be postponed, my own marriage had to be postponed because of COVID. So as Chris and I plan for next year, or sometime at some point, that'll be a book I'll take with me. James, it's great to have you with us. I appreciate it so much. Let's talk again, sir, over the summer.